I greet you in the love and the light of the infinite creator. In Einstein's relativity, there is what has been called a chicken and egg paradox, in the sense that curved space tells the mass of an object how to move, and the movement of an object tells space-time how to curve. Just as in the chicken and egg paradox, there is no understanding of which came first. Was it the mass of the moving object, or the curvature of space-time? This paradox really highlights that relativity is not a complete theory, and it also gives us a clue to what is missing that would make it a complete theory. I believe paradoxes should be seen as opportunities for a deeper understanding. In this theory, photon energy comes first, forming both time and space, with gravity being a property of space-time itself. This is only possible if photon energy represents an emergent process, with everything within that process being quantized. Not just the energy, but also inertia, mass, gravity and space would have to be part of an emergent process coming into existence quanta by quanta. The link between the light photon and gravitational fields can be seen mathematically with both gravitational fields and electromagnetic fields sharing the inverse square law. We think of objects free-falling, but it is the momentum of photon energy radiating out from each object that forms the inward force of gravity. This is only logical if the time dilation of Einstein's relativity is part of an emergent process, with time and space unfolding relative to the energy and momentum of each object. Normally, if we have a creative process, things are added to or made to run faster, but time is inverse within this process, with energy slowing up the rate that time runs as a process of continuous creation. It is time variations within magnetic fields that act as a source for electric fields, and time varying electric fields is a source of the magnetic fields. When one field is changing in time, then a field of the other is induced. This will be relative to the position and momentum of the objects creating the time variations, the atoms themselves. As a process of continuous energy exchange, or what I like to call continuous creation, this can also explain why we have Einstein's equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration. It is because it takes an increase in photon energy to form the acceleration of an object. Gravity is part of a universal process, and this is why there is no difference between the gravity that we have with the motion of the planets and the acceleration of a rocket or even a spinning top. Everything will fall at the same rate. We have a dynamic interactive process with the curvature of space-time continuously changing and unfolding relative to the atoms of the periodic table and the wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum. In this theory, at the most fundamental level, this can be explained as a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. This can be seen in the work of Kepler. He found that the planets move in elliptical orbits with speeds that vary relative to their distance from the Sun. As a planet moves along its path, it sweeps out an equal area segment in an equal time. So there is a form of geometrical symmetry, but the symmetry is broken by the shape of the elliptical orbit. If the planet's orbits were circular, there would be no variation in speed, and we would have perfect symmetry in movement, space, and time. This is because 
the gravitational field formed by the sun is spherical. Therefore, a planet in circular orbit will not encounter a gravitational difference with the effects of time dilation. We can think of this as a universal process that even the broken symmetry of life is based upon. I will place a link here to videos that explains this in greater detail. Thanks for watching. Please sub and share. It will help the promotion of this theory.